Hi, and welcome to Swish's Selfish Time. It is May, and for those of you who don't know, May is actually my birthday month. In fact, if you're watching this on the Sunday that it comes out on YouTube, today is actually my birthday. Funny how that worked out. So I figured all through this month, I want to do the one thing that makes me the happiest when it comes to art, and that is to study classical art. This actually started as an assignment for Ahmed El Dhuri's Meds Map course, which by the way, I did an entire video about it up here in the card above there um, but it started out as coursework for that course and I figured you know what I'm gonna save this for me and just do an entire series of videos learning from ancient art I never went to art school nor have I ever taken any art history lessons but if there's one thing you need to know about me it is that if this was the Sims 4 I would be a renaissance sim so today I want to kick off what I want to call classical art month over the next four weeks we're gonna take a look at some gorgeous art from ye old days and hopefully by the end of this series we'll all have art that looks more painterly and fairy tale like. Today I want to kick things off by looking at technique, more specifically looking at digitizing and oil painting workflow. Now there is no way to actually watch the old masters paint on video so we are going to defer to some contemporary oil painters and look at their workflow and see how we can turn it into a digital painting. And honestly you guys we got so lucky because I actually found a channel called Mate Art where he puts up entire video workshops on oil painting. Go check him out you guys, I'll leave a link in the video description and up here. But today's workflow is going to come from his video called Flemish Painting Technique, a video workshop. He actually demonstrates a still life there but today we're going to try and apply it to a portrait. Will it work? I don't know but let's give it a go. As always please remember to like, comment and subscribe and go show some love to mate art but without much further ado if you'll indulge me for a little bit let's look at classical art month episode one Based off what I've seen, there seems to be two ways in which oil painters start that work. Some create a pencil or charcoal sketch and go straight in with the right colours that you would see in the finished piece, kind of like you would do with a digital painting. That seems to be the more modern approach as far as I can tell. But the more traditional approach seems to be to start with a toned canvas and going in with a raw or burnt umber and roughly marking in where the shadows would go. and then you using that to build the face on top of. I'm going in for a bit of a mix today as in I'll start with a sketch but then I'm gonna tone the canvas. You'll see that the brushes were a bit laggy while toning and that's because I work with an 8k canvas and some of these textured brushes don't like being that big. I then grabbed a colour that is close to a raw or burnt umber and on a new layer painted in the big shadows. This is the approach that Mate Art takes in his video and I found that this is the easiest way just because you do have a bit of structure at the beginning but this way makes sure that none of the sketch is visible in the final product and still leaves a bit of abstraction. Next we're going to grab a paler colour, still an earthy tone, and flatten the big highlights. It's a pretty basic two-toned value sketch and that is what we're going to build upon now. So one key aspect to the more traditional way of oil painting is the several layers of underpainting. This is something that a lot of modern oil painters don't use, presumably because it will take ages to dry each layer. Oils typically need to be left at least overnight to dry, so like imagine having to wait a whole night before being able to put down another layer of paint. 
This is why I don't paint traditionally, to be honest, because drying time. However, this is what they did back in the day. That is probably one big reason why paintings took weeks and months to complete. But thanks to digital art, we can do like 30 layers in one sitting, so that's awesome. Mate suggests doing a few sepia underpainting layers where we actually refine the values and form. I'm going to be honest, I spent a lot of time trying out several brushes at this stage, looking for something that could put down colour and blend as well while maintaining a bit of texture. I downloaded a few custom brush packs and ended up using two or three main brushes. One was the this wet bristles rough brush from the Critter 4 preset bundle. This one comes preloaded into your Critter and then later on realized that I much prefer the wet knife preset just because it is easier to control and offers a smoother blend. The way these brushes work is that when you press down hard on the tablet they put down color but if you use lighter pressure they blend things out. I was focusing on putting down color then blending some of the edges then putting down more color and and rinse and repeat. I also quickly realized that the best way to do this kind of painting was to do it all on one layer. Well, I had each element on its own layer, but each element only got one layer. I also had to adjust the colors because at some point it all went too red, so I hue shifted it towards yellow a little bit. She's still wonky, but we'll fix that later. Our priority right now is to get the values right. Here's the first underpainting that we've ended up with. Alright, now is the time for an optional step that I don't see very many oil painters do, but May Art did this in his video and I kind of fell in love with the look, so we're gonna do it today. It's time for the grisaille layer, also known as the dead layer. This is basically where you paint in some grayscale values. I looked up why people do this layer and found that it mostly helps you see contrast and values better, but in Mate's video he mentioned something very important, and that is that when the grease eye peeks through the paint that we're going to put on top it basically lowers the chroma or the saturation of the color in the half tones our eyes react best to bright daylight the highlights are where you see the most vivid colors right and as you go into the shadows the saturation lowers because the cones in our eyes don't function well in low light this is why you don't see colors in the dark so to emulate that bit of realism the grease eye layer is a out to peek through in some areas and that way you have more grays as it gets darker. However, because we already have a warm sepia underpainting, the cooler grey tone is going to really push that warmth even further, giving us a nice contrast in temperatures. Generally speaking, your shadows tend to be relatively desaturated, but because we're painting skin and skin has that beautiful subsurface scattering from blood underneath the surface, we're going to be able to see a lot more warmth in the shadows than you normally would. And with the grisaille layer done, we're officially done with underpaintings and are now ready to use some actual colours. This is where we make big decisions on what will actually be visible in the final painting. I had a ton of classical paintings to look at while I painted, they were in a pure ref window on my second screen, and still using that wet knife brush preset, I started putting down colours in her skin. Because this is based on classical art, we do want the skin to look fairly realistic, so I made sure to stick to believable colours. No crazy fluorescent pinks or blues, no smooth airbrushing, no texture brushes, just the wet knife, colour pick and blending. Once I'd finished a pass of colour all over the painting, I went in with a second pass, refining things even further. This is where I really fixed up the shapes and forms, trying to make her look a little less wonky. It's been a while since I've painted a proper realistic face, and as it turns out, stylization can in fact make you forget what an actual human head looks like. Who would have thought? 
thought. I also used this step to paint some fiery glow on one side of her face and body and this was actually my favorite part of the process was to hand paint that glow rather than using a bunch of layer effects to do it. Because we spent this long doing several layers of underpainting, this process ended up being a lot quicker than I anticipated. It was mostly just a matter of putting down a bit of color, blending it, and then using that little patch to color pick and do the rest. Since the values were already in place, all I had to do was essentially tint the painting. I also went in with the airbrush, I know it's cheating, but I rationalized it as using a very diluted layer of paint to glaze with, okay? It's my birthday, let me have this. But I went in with the airbrush and added a bit of redness in some areas where I'd accidentally painted over the underpainting too much, and with that in place we can go ahead and finish this baby up. This is the part where you go in with a tiny brush radius and fix up all the details. Now I wanted to keep all of the beautiful texture in the painting so I mostly just used this step to clean some edges, add more variation and paint in some textures and details. At first I thought of adding some jewellery but it ended up just not adding anything to the painting and just being a noisy detail so I got rid of it. I wanted to maintain that effect of everything blowing in the wind but the candles flame staying as is and having static jewelry that wouldn't blow in the wind was actually taking away from that effect. I did create some gradients to give the painting a subtle vignette and then went in with some scatter brushes to create floating specks. You know I love my floating specks of light, they always add loads of movement and with this piece specifically they enhance that wind blown effect. And with all of that in place, we finally have our finished painting for today, Draft. I'm gonna be honest, I've never given this much thought or time to the underpainting before, but I feel like the end result speaks for itself. What do you think? Will you be incorporating these techniques into your painting? Do you already paint like this? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out so, so much. And definitely go show some love to Mate Art. I'll leave a link to his channel below. And trust me, there is so much you can learn from his content. Next week we're gonna face our biggest nightmare. Seriously, I can guarantee it's major cry at least once, but we'll figure it out next week. And with all of that said, I hope you enjoy the rest of Classical Art Month as well, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Check out some more videos up here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!